Was that last one recording? Sure was. Okay, good. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? Oasis or Blur? No. What? Oasis, I, I mean Oasis. To find 50 better tunes than this, I think you can yeah. do it. It's absolutely minor, Chief. No, it's not, it's in G. Well, that's what no, I wrote it. <laughs> what do you want to hear? Oasis. The next song is Live Forever. Uh, the 50 greatest Oasis songs of all time. Maybe. Can I tell you where I first heard that song? Uh, I was waking, waking up to the sounds of longwave radio Atlantic 252 on a radio alarm clock and it was at the I had set for five minutes past seven and I was in the top bunk and I, I heard the DJ so I was listening to that radio station a pirate pirate radio station and uh, they fucking love the whistles like genuinely they <laughs> They would play like seven different Oasis songs every three hours or so. And I would give back to the Ireland's top 30 hits at some point. It was a TV show that was on. It was sort of Ireland's vague equivalent to Top of the Pops, except Top of the Pops had people go up there and try and mime their own songs, which was fucking stupid. Whereas Top 30 Hits give you a 30 second clip of the music video, so you had a, a brilliant fucking idea of what a fucking music video was. So for example, Prodigy, and fucking uh, Chemical Brothers, and fucking uh, Bewitched, because you wanted to see Bewitched, but that was well after this. Yeah, so I heard that, that, that fucking drum intro, and this was actually after they had hit the big time, by the way, so this was like, after I was already familiar with them, after uh, it would have been, I don't know if it was after Wonderwall, but it may have been, but um, I was definitely fully engaged in Oasis as a concept, and Oasis as a band, and then he turned around and goes, here's a song from Oasis. Maybe. And so on. And it was like every, like I just turned around as a fucking nine year old, turned around on my pedal and said, like, okay, yeah, that, that bit's good, that bit's good, that bit's good. Every fucking bit was just fucking brilliant. And that was her second single. After fucking Supersonic, I just got them to number 31 on the charts. You come back with this, live forever. Oh yes, uh, 20th anniversary of Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. Um, stand, and, and I did say that correctly, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. Uh, that is actually an album which has a lot of personal um, uh, not animosity, was it? I'm, I'm, I'm very fond of that album, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. I am very fond of. Uh, I bought it when I was about, uh, I would have been 14 at the time, uh, and I bought it on the day it was out, etc., etc. Uh, the lead single, and I have done a fucking blog about this, the lead single kills it, right? I think that fucking killed the whistles, by the way that uh, after Be Here Now, the next lead single was Go Let It Out. And that is the fucking weakest pile of fucking garbage you will ever fucking hear. Make no illusions. I'm gonna do a whole fucking video on the duds and Go Let It Out is the fucking it's a dud that killed Oasis, right? Because there was actually a lot to fucking recommend that album, right? Fucking in the bushes. It's not for nothing that it was fucking sampled in a, Oasis, in a fucking Guy Ritchie movie. Um, uh, Where Did It All Go Wrong? Sunday Morning Call. Who Feels Love? I didn't ever like, but it showed that, it, that Noel was like, he was looking at other 
parts of the world. And then the fucking gold standard of that fucking album, Gas Panic. Jesus Christ. I would actually consider that. Well, it's definitely the top 50 of his songs. Spoilers. I would put that possibly, possibly in the top 10, if not the top 5 Oasis songs of all time. But you're going to get a whole fucking video on that. But that's just the news. 20 years of um, standing on the shoulder of giants, which I feel is a very underrated album. You can check out my acting and my podcasting, Father Ted Podcast, and just a lot of my other stuff. Acting, podcast, other stuff.